I like to start uh, my presentation with the usual sentence that I like to share with my audience, and that is, le seul véritable voyage, ce ne serait pas d'aller de nouveau paysage, mais de t'avoir d'entretien. And so it means uh, something like uh, a, a, a true research journey is not just to discover new territories, but to have new eyes. New eyes to see, new eyes as new individuals. And the uh, presentation online is organized in this way. Uh, introduction, transdisciplinary cognition, transdisciplinarity in education the challenges of evolutionary learning, model paradigmatic limitation, the two modelly understandings, and then conclusion. You see, it's a, a deep, a deep uh, outline. i sure I will not have time to go to each uh, topic, but I try to give you an overview that uh, has some kind of meaning, hopefully. And so we start uh, uh, with this. We were and are still currently educated to reductionist learning, which leads to action based on unaware approximated approximation. It's not just a, a war game, but it's a, it's a reality. Um, I remember in the, well, uh, think about the, the, the usual sentence by Einstein that is uh, that we cannot solve uh, current problems with the same thinking we create them. And that, uh, that was the phrase that just uh, was uh, captured by the Club of Rome in 1968, and they tried to organize the first conference uh, to develop a new language uh, between technical people and social people, and unfortunately, there was a failure. It was organized by Aurelio Peche and Alexander King, and with the 22 participants uh, with different disciplines, and then at the time it was a failure because they realized that disciplines are just kept in silos, and silos are good for brain, but not for brain. And so from that failure, the Club of Rome learned a lot. And uh, this year is the 50th anniversary of Club of Rome. And they, again, they never, never stop thinking in, in advance and try and continue this trying. So we got uh, to a new proposal. We must switch to evolutionary learning, which can create the right interaction with the complex world and universe based on aware exact approximations. New eyes means the transdisciplinary cognition or cognitive transdisciplinarity. And transdisciplinarity in education for deep learning, creativity, and innovation, you can get some kind of hint from a paper that I presented at the, in the previous conference of education in Rome. Then you see the reference there if you want to download from the internet. And new eyes is uh, cognitive transdisciplinarity, but what is it? We have tried to define that. And so, you see, I try to figure out, uh, with the help of many, many members of, of the Academy, the World Academy of Art and Science, we went through these five topics, uh, fundamental topics, humanity and technology, mind thinking and rationality, creativity, modeling social reality, education for the 21st century. And so I got uh, just a, a nice combination because uh, IEEE asked me to organize for next July, uh, July 2019, a, a conference on uh, cognitive informatics. And uh, you see, uh, uh, see uh, brain inspired systems, cognitive robotics. And then I, I got uh, something, uh, an idea. Why uh, this is might be the, the good opportunity to try a new experiment you know, just to try to develop a new language between technical people and social people. And so I, I talked to the president of IEEE, James Jeffries, and to the general chairman of these conferences, because this is, will be the 18th edition of this conference. And they, and they agreed with me just to try to do this, this, this great experiment, because it will be the, just the, the, the attempt to do, develop a really a new language between technical people and social people at the, at the higher level. And this time, I think that the time is right to get some kind of fruitful result. And so, um, you see, uh, again, we get in the deeply uh, into the subtopics of our each team. And, 
uh, you see there, I have no time to discuss in deep each one of them. But the, f the most important one is this one, education for the 21st century. And so they agreed to add a, a new column to the usual program, and you see there the topics that they were just taught between World Academy of Science, Art and Science and IEEE to get some kind of uh, references uh, that can be shared by technical people and social people. That is the fifth column. I think that uh, today or tomorrow uh, you will find a flyer around just to get you know, this kind of memory with you if you are really interested. And so, why this need? Because, uh, you know, uh, as, a major, as, a, as a matter of fact, uh, we have uh, uh, many paradigmatic limitations from these different disciplines. Especially, I give you just two simple examples, but they are just two examples only. There are so many, but they, I think that those are mo the most important. The one from the technical side, uh, that is uh, optimal control theory system robustness. I mean, I don't mean that it counts nothing, because with the optimal cultural theory, uh, we, we uh, got to the moon, we went to the moon. But again, it's really limited if you want a more intelligent system to interact with in the future. And system risk analysis, system risk from, from the social part of the story, is so limited, so limited because it is based only on statistical analysis. That's not enough to take care of all the components of our reality. Unfortunately, stochastic analysis is unable to go through the opaque veil uh, they, they get from the data. We need something more transparent. So to face the challenge of life of this complex system understanding the reliable arbitrary complex multi-scale systems modeling, we need to be able to manage system uncertainty quantification from macro scale through mesoscale, T nanoscale and beyond. I give you just a visual example that is uh, currently we are still trying to focus on the problem to solve and we focus only on the system, on the system in focus. We have no way to model the, uh, the system at the bottom and the system at the top. So the final result, we have a limited view of our reality and even worse, we, tr we completely neglect this kind of interactions that there are from bottom to the middle and from uh, uh, top to the middle. Those are the main interactions that we never take, take into account with our current modeling. That has some kind of, that we call remembering from the top to the medium, and the one that they, we call revolt from the bottom to the medium. So uh, the final result is that if you want to solve our current problem, we, t we face this kind of situation. We have two solutions. We can, have, we can start from the top, going down, and so, we have this kind of situation. Going down, we lose information because the noise will prevail on, on the useful information and we get the, the signals weaker and weaker. And then if we start from the, the, the bottom, we go up and if, sooner or later we hit a ceiling because uh, we have a combinatorial explosion. So both ways fail, unfortunately, because they, will be, uh, they are unable to overcome the gray area that we are interested most to, <laughs> within because the, our problems are in that area. So, is there a solution to that? We'll see. Uh, we have just to remember that complexity is the impossibility of separating a system from its context. This is, I think, the simpler definition of complexity. A living being from its environment, an object from its measuring instrument. This is so important in science. They always present data without saying anything about the measuring instruments. And so we have two modeling understandings. The traditional one, the past one, by the four systems are simple. Some of them are complicated. Occasional systems are complex and weaker systems are exceedingly rare. Unfortunately, Fukushima tell, tell, tells us an, a different story. By the four systems are complex. Simple systems are limiting cases, includes complicated systems, and complex systems treated as if they were simple tend to generate wicked problems. 
So we did a new framework to work with. So you see there, we were trained to focus on the space, but from information theory, as a matter of fact, that's not the full information we, we can count off. And we have to remember that the full information in an approximated way is represented by four basic components. The direct space, that is the, our Euclidean space, the co-direct space, the reciprocal space, and, reciprocal, and a co-reciprocal space. You see there, you see I, N, R, D, they are just the transformation of Jean, Pie Jean Piaget. This is amazing. Uh, Jean Piaget arrived to this four basic transformation in 1955, and nobody t took care of that. They just uh, through go, uh, go through the experimentation, misinterpreted completely the data that they, that they, they, they uh, were getting. And so they just uh, put Piaget in a corner. And, and amazing, that, that is amazing. Uh, how many times in, in, in the history some, some uh, enlightened guy has a glimpse of the reality in the way it can unfold and nobody just uh, put, uh, get attention to it. And, uh, and in fact, if we use this kind of framework, then we discover that there are f three more components, but as a matter of fact, the interracial relationship with these three more components are so important that we never studied that. Are we smart as human beings? Oh, well. And even, even worse, we don't even think about the cross, the cross relationships that are the most important ones. And so if you divide it into two alves, this framework, you see that we have the inner universe that can be modeled by reciprocal space, a co-reciprocal space, and then you have the outer universe that is, can be modeled with a, a direct space plus the co-direct space. So we get uh, res cogitans and rex extensa uh, just connected by cross relationships. Ha ha, isn't that amazing? <laughs> now we have been able to find a solution to the previous problem, and so now we can develop uh, systems more intelligent that are able just to get that kind of, of, of behavior with no information loss. And so that's the reason I found a group that is called CICT, that is uh, Computational Information Conservation Theory. And so now we have just a uh, choice to model system in the, in the past way, half plane space, uh, you see all the references there, the properties there, and the new framework, the OECS space, that is mainly uh, for living matter best representation operational compromise, just uh, uh, in comparison to inner matter best operational representation compromise in the past. I have no time to go through to all of them, but uh, you can see that uh, they are matched one by one. And uh, sure, I mean, uh, we have to invest more because uh, this framework is a little is more complex than the previous one. But the reality is that with the previous one, you can just model this kind of reality. If for your application is enough, it's good. But if you want to model something more complex, uh, this, uh, this approach is not good at all, and you have to switch to the new one. It's more costly for sure, it will cost twice than the previous one, but then you will be assured that you get all the information you need to avoid to be less wrong than the past. And so we have to just to remember the challenge of evolutionary learning now, because we all share this both planet Earth, we have to learn to live in harmony and peace with each other and with nature. This is not just a dream, but a necessity. And so, this is the uh, World Academy of Art and Science new paradigm for human development. The human being is the source of unlimited creative potential, and the present reduction is paradigm falls for sh far short of fully developing the potential of its members. Solutions are available because utilize, unutilized human potential exists in abundance and waiting to be developed and, re and released. For instance, Nikola Tesla was a remarkable man not only for his invention, but also for his dedication and application. It is amazing to, re to read of his inner life in a way rarely shared. 
according to the, uh, the Academy, New Paradigm for Human Development, as their creation of a new vision and new story for our shared future. An inspired cultural revival can be materialized in many different ways, which, however, must share a common, solid cultural background, built on dedication and application. Think about when you retiring, I mean, that is the starting point for a new approach. You finish your training, you are ready to be active in the real world, to help other people to grow faster. If you want to, if you like to know more, just a little commercial. This is my book that will be available at the end of the year, hopefully, or just in the spring. And then, uh, again, you are welcome just to, to participate to the conference in Milano on next July uh, from the 21st to the 25th. But never forget, neuralizing work is always in progress. Thank you for your attention.